Good morning, everyone. Thank you for attending our Board of Commissioners meeting. Uh, we will begin as is customary with the observance of a moment of silence. Thank you. Please rise for a pledge to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, well, before we get into the formal agenda, we have uh, an opportunity for public comment. Is there anyone that would like to come before the board? not uh, to proceed with the approval of the minutes of our September 5th meeting and our workshops on the September 4th, 11th, and 18th, uh, all which were held for personnel uh, in the executive session. Make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any additions, deletions, or corrections? Hearing none all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both same signs, so moved. Good morning, Mrs. Noon. Morning. To introduce yourself and then. Okay, Sally Newen, like a county treasurer. And for my report today, we had receipts on 917 and 918 of $16,959.30. Brings us to a total cash of $2 million. $722,944.91. We had expenditures of $169,851.89. Tax claim is $10,737.05, leaving us a balance of $2,542,355.91. Is there a motion? Motion to approve the minutes subject to audit. So we already did the measure. Second that. Okay, we have a motion to second to approve the treasurer's report as presented. Any questions for our treasurer? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same signs. So moved. Yeah, I do have one other uh, item here. We're opening an account for the election integrity grant to keep that money separate. Make a motion to open the account as requested. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we move the opening of that account for the integrity uh, election. Any questions regarding this motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Morning. Morning. Shaw Snavely, Director of Human Resources. Thank you. Personnel transactions, resignations, and terminations. James Piles Jr., part time meal transporter at Area Agency on Aging, deceased, effective September 13th. James Poultry, part time security officer, building security, deceased, effective September 7th. Tana Miller, part time court clerk in the Clerk of Courts, <clears throat> terminated, effective September 9th. Michael Garrick, full-time correctional officer at the jail, resignation, effective September 13th. Douglas Sigmund Jr., full-time correctional officer at the jail, resignation, effective September 17th. Andrea Suarez, Secretary D, Public Defender's Office, resignation, effective September 17th. And Deborah Johnson, Clerk Typist A, Sheriff's Office, resignation, effective September 9th. I'd like a motion to approve those resignation terminations and special note to uh, recognize uh, both Jim Piles and Jim Poultry who passed away recently and our condolences to their families and, and thanks for their many years of great service to our county. I'll second the motion and I wondered if anybody had the funeral and information. Certainly, uh, Poultry that yeah, the service at the convenes of the family. And, and oh, they're not going to have a, okay. That's from the current. Thank you. There's a motion and a second on the floor. Any 
questions regarding this motion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Same sign, so moved. Under changes of status transfers and promotion, Colleen brought us promotion from Administrative Assistant 1 in Domestic Relations to Administrative Assistant 2 at the rate of $1,333.67.52 biweekly, effective September 30th. Taylor Long, promotion from Office Support 2 in Domestic Relations to Administrative Assistant 1 in Domestic Relations at the rate of $1,240.62 biweekly, effective September 30th. Samuel M. Walter, promotion from Private First Class at the jail to Lance Corporal at the jail at the rate of $24.46 per hour plus $1 per hour Lance Corporal pay, effective September 29th. Byron McDaniels, promotion from private first class at the jail to full-time correctional officer at the rate of $24.46 per hour, effective September 18th. Heather May, change of status from full-time therapy aid at the Renova Center to full-time direct support aid at the rate of $16.54 per hour, effective September 30th. And Giovanni Lentini, promotion, or excuse me, transfer from full-time correctional officer at the jail to full-time deputy sheriff in the sheriff's office at the rate of $19.94 per hour, effective September 30th. Make a motion to approve the changes of status. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both same signs, so moved. Under other transactions, Monetary Clerk of Courts would like to hire Sierra Runyon as a part-time court clerk at the rate of $15.96 per hour, effective September 23rd. The Department of Emergency Services would like to hire the following two full-time telecommunicators, both at the rate of $19.28 per hour, both effective September 23rd, and that is John Maroney, Marissa Shoemaker. District Attorney's Office would like to hire Adriana Porcher as a full-time Central Booking Agent at the rate of $15.08 per hour, effective September 23rd. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Janelle Forcino in the Domestic Relations Office as Office Support 2 at the rate of $1,131.44 by weekly, effective September 30th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Lillian Martinez Mitchell in the Domestic Relations Office as Office Support 2 at the rate of $1,131.44 by weekly, effective September 30th. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Lauren Cordon as a in the Domestic Off Relations Office as an Administrative Assistant One at the rate of one thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars and thirty cents by weekly effective September thirtieth. President Judge Tilwalk would like to hire Sherry Adams in MDJ Dissinger's office at the as a DJ Office Support One at the rate of nine hundred and eighty two dollars and thirty four cents by weekly effective September twenty third. And Renova would like to hire Teresa. Velazquez as a full-time direct support aide at the rate of $15.21 per hour, effective September 30th. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second on the floor. Uh, anything else regarding this transaction? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so moved. Moving on to salary board. There's a motion to uh, approve all transactions previously read, plus there are two start date corrections for Luz Vasquez at Community Action Partnerships. Start date moved until September 16th, and Glenda Folsom from Community Action Partnerships start date moved until September 25th. Both were approved for salary at the last meeting. Motion. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve those salary board transactions. Any questions regarding the motion? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Thank you. Aye. Post same sign, so order. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Can you all just uh, give a moment until Jamie comes back? You can introduce yourself. I'm sorry, you may introduce yourself. <laughs> Danielle Hogg, Chief Information Officer, Information Technology Services. I'm requesting approval for the financial package, annual maintenance, and support agreement. You want the dollar amount or yes i'd walk yeah. through okay and can you do these all in one oh you want to do no, one whole no do, do one at a time oh, oh i got you 
in this change, if you have any other points, one day. A financial package, annual maintenance and support agreement in the amount of $112,084.26. I want to just explain a little bit of what that is. It is the hardware and software support for the entire uh, financial package. It gives us our help support, updates, patches to the system. I'm sorry, did you say 4,000? Mm -hmm. $112,084.26. Okay. That makes more sense. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve that contract. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, who's that with? We typically don't provide that information um, due to security reasons for the network. And oh, okay. isn't, I don't know, isn't that public though? I'm right to know. Well, they can try that. Don't want to make that decision around on the spot, but I think she's explained it's for security reasons. Yeah, we don't disclose what systems we use. It opens a window of attack factor for oh. cybersecurity. And, and there is an exemption in the Right to Know Act uh, regarding uh, security for um, for technology infrastructure, things of that sort. So, okay, thank yeah. you. Thanks, Matt. Okay. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. All same sign, so moved. Next up is the hardware and software maintenance agreement for our mainframe system. Uh, that gives us software patches, uh, hardware support as well, and warranties that system and gives us 24-7 coverage in case anything would go down on that system. Uh, $6,689. That is annual. I do want to note all of these are already approved in budget. These were already. I'll make a motion to approve the servit agreement for the six thousand six hundred eighty nine dollars. Second. So moved and seconded that we approve this uh, agreement. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Most same sign. So moved. Third is the. Microsoft plan. Um, these are our office and email licenses. Uh, the amount is $16,435.76 monthly, and it is for the annual renewal. Motion to approve. Second. We moved and second that we approve this contract. Any questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both same sign, so moved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. How are you? Yeah, how are you? Good. Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to um, introduce yourself and your guest, and we may proceed. Sounds good. I am Bob Dowd, Director of the Department of Emergency Services. And I have Jonathan Hansen with me, who is with NCM Consulting Group, which is the firm managing our radio location. Here this morning with two items for the board to take action on. Uh, the first is entering into a lease agreement with Mountain Zion Fire Company. This is the location for one of the towers that we're building. Uh, it is a 20 year lease uh, with the option to renew for additional 20 years. And in Consideration for this lease is we'll provide a new generator and generator capacity to the so. Is there a motion to approve this with uh, Mount Zion? I'll make a motion to approve the Mount Zion lease. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any questions regarding the motion? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so moved. Next thing is the tower bids, uh, which went out earlier this summer. We received three bids back. Uh, we've had them reviewed and we're prepared to uh, make the recommendation to order the lowest responsible bidder. But first, I'll go through them all. Uh, Key Tower was one of the bidders. Tower was one of the bidders. Their total bid was $7,731,836. The Pyramid Wireless was the next bidder. 
there are five million six hundred eighty-five thousand one hundred and seven dollars and seventy-five cents. When ECI Wireless was three million three hundred ninety-five thousand and forty-eight dollars. Surprisingly wide range. Yes. Yeah, one of the double of the other. Yeah. Talk to them and ECI Wireless is local and does a lot of a lot of the stuff in the house, very little stuff in the granted. So I guess when I see the disparity, let's get a motion on the full minute to discuss. Uh, so the bids have been reviewed. Uh, BCI is the lowest responsible bidder as reviewed by MCM Consulting. So the recommendation is that we award them the bid. Make a motion to approve their recommendation. Second the motion. So my question is, means that they are so low, um, and now we have a track record with them also. There's the ones who did your building. Yeah. But uh, is this lot that they cannot, there are no openings for other cost overruns? Uh, how's that work? It, it is locked, so the, the bid is a deliverable. Uh, that's the price for deliverable. However, there are certain unknowns, biggest being geotechnical stuff, if they run into rock that was not part of the surveys. Okay. We always, we're always on the hook to do stuff like that. And that would apply to all three of those? Bids. Yes. Okay. So. Yeah. Uh, just wanted to ask the question. Anything else to disclose or to? Um, no, just we did review all three bids. Um, ECI was the, the the lowest responsible bid. They met all the bid requirements. Um, all their submissions, uh, everything was complete. Uh, I think just to add, I think one of the reasons, uh, as Bob said, they do everything in house. Uh, the only thing they're going to sub out is a little electrical work, and they do have their own crane. So they're not leasing cranes, which is very expensive um, for the tower and shelter installations. Any questions uh, or any further discussion? So does that account for the disparity between 3 million, 3.3 million and 7.7? .7? I think the biggest part is that, that they do everything in house. They're okay. not subcontracting out. The, um, Kashi, it doesn't say PCI, does it? I mean, it, no, it does not. It is. It was confusing. I had them labeled on the files that I sent you. Uh, okay. But when they printed out, ECI did not have their label. That was the part that was confusing. Thank you. I think only one of them printed out. Pardon? I think only one of them printed out when I printed it out. Yeah. Okay. I can send you ones with the. Yeah, the well, I can write it on. I just it was confusing mm -hmm. trying to decipher which yeah. one was which. Yeah, and I did the I did I wrote ECI okay. the top line too. To Thank you. Clear. So are they in Lebanon? ECI is out of Dillsburg. Dillsburg. Yeah, Bob, uh, can you speak to a little bit? We talked about this before, but readdress the, the locations, the selections for the various sites uh, you know, out throughout the county. And obviously the purpose of the so, yeah, uh, this high level, this bids for seven towers so relative emission at the beginning. The system total is 13 towers, um, several of which we already own. Uh, we're going to continue leasing two spaces. Uh, we just couldn't find a better location. The rest of the towers that we're building, um, they address coverage gaps. You know, when you're refreshing a system like this, it's kind of important to get feedback from users, which we did. Uh, the Mount Zion Fire and Company Tower is a good example. There's a huge coverage hole on that side of the county that wanted to fill. All the other tower locations were selected. Uh, coverage first, and and when you're when you're looking at land, first thing you check is government partners, um, fire companies, places where you can have. A, uh, relatively streamlined um, relationships to, to make it happen. Then we move to private sector after that. Locations are all intended to provide the best coverage for the system. And then the Mount Zion partnership, um, it's sort of a 20 years and then a 20 year option for yeah. to re release it. Mm -hmm. um, does that also include providing more generators? Well, gener generators are once and done. What, is it once yeah. and done? Okay. Yeah. Do you know how much that, how much that costs? Fairly populous. The transfer switch, I think it was 30, some change. Yeah, about 30. Uh, 30,000. Yeah. And Mount Zion Fire Company wants this there because it helps them. Yeah, they're, they've got coverage issues. So they're certainly going to work with us to make this happen. We appreciate that. 
Excuse me. Excuse me. I, I'm assuming you're going to address the uh, source of the funds issue. Oh, right? uh, no, I wasn't going to. If you want, I, I can. I mean, you might as well. The source is coming from the ARPA funds for this. This is part of what was uh, early on um, set aside or uh, numbered for not only the building, but, but the, uh, the tower sites as well. Um, my question, or not my question, I just wanted to make sure you touched on the numbers and Jim alluded to, because we started off planning on 10 of these and we're at seven, I believe. Nine. Nine to yeah. seven. Um, how many, and you talked about Mount Zion and so on, there's, we had, we had some land acquisition that was necessary, yeah. uh, which is additional to these costs. So, you know, which is also covered. Uh, covered through our but but so it's it has evolved a little bit. It started off with nine and, and and hopefully having sites that we wouldn't have to acquire. But as you went, that changed. I I assume that being county government and the, the purpose of these towers, that the process will be relatively easy and people will be willing to work with us. Not that they're not willing to work with us, but challenges uh, when it comes to constructing a tower are significant. It is amazing the number of bodies that get involved, uh, everything from historical societies to uh, zoning variances to backyard issues. Yeah, uh, to, you know, people don't. The towers are a unfortunate, necessary evil to support vital infrastructure. Just you have to have them. And they're ugly. They're always going to be ugly. And nobody wants them. So it, it is a challenge to get them done. I think that the process is eased a little bit. My observation was the process is eased a little bit, particularly with local officials, because it's it's for public safety, and yes. and you know in their community, it's going to likely assist their first responders and improve the communication. So that certainly makes it a little more palatable for them. Gets to that point. And all the all the entities we've worked with have been very supportive of it. Mm -hmm. It's just the process. It's a lot of red tape to get through. A good example is we had planned for the tower at 40 million, near 40 million town gap. We couldn't make it happen. With all the FAA restrictions that were out there, in fact, there was already a lease that we had run through the meeting with the Boy Scout camp. Just, just no way to make that tower happen. Are, no, any, excuse me, Jim. Oh, I'm sorry. Are any of these out of the county? <clears throat> out of the county? No. Okay. Where's Mount Hope? Uh, that is Speedway by the Turnpike. There's a, a body shop top of that hill. There's already a tower right there. It's a cell phone tower. We'll build next to that. It's probably a few hundred feet from the county line. Yeah, it's very close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Big coverage gap in Gretna Springs and Spring Lakers that that tower's going to fix. All right. Thank you. Several questions. One of the seven sites you now are suggesting today that they approve how many of them are public versus private in the, in the big scheme of things because obviously you may have to work with private landowners as well and we talked about that in the past that's so the part of the only only sites that will that we're leasing from private mount zion fire company mount hope and that's it well from a private leasing standpoint um, everything else is either government owned or it is um we are going to own the land or and then um the second part of that is you the original wish list was nine and you got seven for this yeah. barbara has to be sent spent soon are the other <laughs> two like projected for the future or those dead deals or you they are you live with seven where where, where did your thoughts move forward we're, we're still we're going to continue leasing tower space on those two remaining current, so current towers yeah. current towers the cost of everything has gone up since we budgeted so building seven towers um it's still less than nine towers which is great uh, but the savings is not uh, you can't take the original budget number divided by nine Monthly uh, for site cost is just too dynamic. Uh, we are going to save some money, and I will go back and pull for the commissioners to reallocate accordingly. 
Did, do we know how much that is? No. Because you originally thought nine, that was projected. You kind of yeah. put that aside from the ARPA funding. But I know Jamie said at the last meeting that you thought if the bids come in lower, is that would that be applied then toward building project here? That's up to the commissioners. I haven't really ha haven't solidified that yet. Do we know how much how much difference that is since that you're that you're out of your mark that you have to then essentially spend everything no. the three point three and just to to manage expectations or kind of the we're still we have to do generators all of a sudden because that's coming off state contracts, so that's an additional amount of money. Um and then there's contingency with the things that I talked about that you know, just run into costs that are not part of the business. They're doing this uh, permitting, even right down to you know Meta charging us to do a connection, and depending on how long after the wire, it might cost more than what we anticipated. So we build a contingency into this to make sure we stay within budget. Um, whatever's remaining from that, certainly the um, that nine million that included system pieces, and a lot of that money's already been spent. So actual radios themselves were already purchased. That's already came out of our but it's done. Total tower budget was around five, a little over five million. Our rough numbers say this is going to be somewhere around four and a half, but it's not it's not finalized yet. So <laughs> and they have to be it has to be spent before the end of twenty six. Designated by end of 24, spent by end of 24. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't get me wrong, there will be some left over money. And that down uh, as we move forward. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else? Uh, yeah, I like that. Thank you, Tom. It's an interesting my perspective being in this chair for a over two and a half years now, and this project hats off to. Fellow commissioners here and like Commissioner Ames for approving this project, Bob, your team, and uh, Mr. Anderson, and anybody else that participated in that. You know, I I remember as the project was launched, initially uh, uh, some criticism about how much money we were spending, and and I don't think people realize what we're getting for for the huge uh, commitment, but a, a very important uh, investment in uh, improving our responses and, and communications, having handhelds with all the, the uh, first responders in the community, and that's a savings to each municipality as well and those fire departments and everybody else. And again, improving their efficiencies at the, the facility we now have, uh, or having participate in two drills. I remember the first drill said, how did you do this? And the, well, it was, Almost impossible, yeah. Yeah, you know. I'll follow. So again, just my hats off. I think it's money well spent. Now we have towers that we're we're eliminating some some costs for, for renting space, and we can now actually generate some revenue from some of these towers. So, so yeah. well thought out. But yeah. by anyone, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the more capital to buy them, but the return on investment without any other revenue. Um, is somewhere between five and ten years for each tower, and if you generate revenue from leasing, uh, a return on investment seems faster and helps offset the cost of a system like this to the taxpayer, which is great. Were you able to work things out with the gentleman I referred to you from Lancaster? Yes. Well, we're we're working, well, working what they need. Out. Yep. But you're, that's yep. still on the table. Yep. So Absolutely. that's the first lease then. Uh, that's an existing tower that they want to lease on. But yes. Oh, okay. Yep, we're. I thought it was one of the new Working ones. With them, uh, they're going to get us all the information about what they want to put on and we can accommodate them as well. Okay. Uh, Jamie, correct me if I'm wrong. The total project cost is about $40 million all park and for the locations piece is about a quarter of that. Is that no? The total, the total project was 60. The communications piece was 19 and some change. The building plus plus technology, plus contents was 40. Right. Building itself, 30, 29, seven. Right. And we're still within budget. Great. So it's a mixture of ARPA and, bo and borrowing okay. for all of that. Very good discussion. Uh, all the motion here, all in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Post same signs, so moved. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.
Jamie, I'll move through my items here. Uh, first, I have disabled veteran uh, exemptions from real estate tax for those who are qualified. Police Folk of Sweetwater Lane, Newmanstown, Marianne Schroeder of Northwood Drive, Lebanon, Rosemary Burris of Walnut Street, Lebanon, Lynette Dela Cruz of South 7th Street, Lebanon, Louis Min Minichino of Spring House Drive, Myerstown, and Kevin Zeichel of Century Lane, Newmanstown. Make a motion to approve the real estate tax exemption request for the veterans. Back. We moved and seconded that we approve those exemptions. Any questions? Hearing none, all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Most safe signs to move. Next, I have a another application for the Pennsylvania County Risk Pool, uh, who is our general and liability uh, property and general liability insurance carrier, uh, for a loss prevention grant program. As I've outlined before, they provide a thirty thousand dollar a year grant to the county to undertake any sort of projects or um, materials or programs that could reduce our loss prevention in any way. And safety committee considers these and recommends them to you. This, this, this one I have today is for $10,000 for a uh, replacement and a badge and lamination system, the badge and lamination system for the county employees. This system we currently have is seven years old. Doesn't sound that old, but end of life is pretty quick on things like this. And uh, this would then uh, avoid the need for having to put it into the general fund budget for 2025 if you approve this. Uh, the total cost is $12,192 for the entire package. Um, we're recommending 10,000 of the grant be used toward that. If you approve that, that leaves us with about $8,000 left in the grant. It runs until May. Um, typically, we also uh, cover some costs involved with the guardian system at the jail, which is the accountability system for where the correctional officers have been, where the inmates are in terms of in the facility. So I'll anticipate that that's probably going to be a request that comes a little bit later, but we have a meeting on Monday. Could I request, I think it's a correction, the total project cost is 12192 <clears throat> Uh the, This is, well, the portion that we're asking for from E Corp is yes, totally that goes on up. the second of grant amount request. Okay, make a motion to that request. Second, and Jamie, this is to increase the loss prevention. Definitely. Uh, it's kind of maintaining it, I would say. Yeah, that's right, because we're, we're used to it. Yeah, some point. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, but we 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 always. Um, screen first with e -Corp to make sure we're not going to submit something they're going to question or, or reject. So we usually do a little bit of a pre pre screen. So. Any questions from anyone? Good. All in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Both same signs, so moved. I have a uh, resignation from a longtime member of the MHIDEI board, uh, advisory board, Sarah Fuller. Uh, Sarah has been on the board for over 25 years and has chaired that board for a long time. I imagine all three of you know Sarah. Uh, she, she's just been a really great leader and uh, and had a, has had a deep concern for um, for MHIDEI and, and the consumers and the staff and so on. And I, I think that she, I think she was here for three different administrators. She was here at the tail end of, of one in the, in the late 90s and then Kevin and Holly, of course. So she's been with us a long time. She also made it fun, like with ice cream socials and things like that. And we got to help make Sundays for everyone. So she has uh, got her letter. She's just decided it's time in her life to move on. We appreciate everything she's done. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the resignation with admiration um, for Sarah. Second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded uh, with our thanks. Any questions regarding this motion? If not all in favor, please indicate by saying on. All right, post same sign, so moved. And there's a recommendation from that board to uh, 
to appoint to a vacancy, Joseph Duke. Uh, I think there was a resume and, and a short letter <laughs> attached in your packet. Uh, he is a member of number of advocacy groups uh, and, and also on the suicide prevention task force here in the community and as a desire to serve individuals and families in Loveland County who struggle with mental health and addiction issues. So this term, if approved, would serve would expire on December 31st of 27. Motion to approve that point. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve Mr. Duke. Any questions? Not all in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Both same signs, so moved. Okay, we have a proclamation uh, acknowledging the uh, retirement of Sheila Redkay from the Matthews Public Library in Fredericksburg. I'll make a motion to approve the proclamation. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve that proclamation on behalf of Ms. Uh, Sheila Redkay for her service to the Matthews Public Library. Any questions? Uh, it is supposed to be a surprise, so, but to get it through, we had to pass it today. I just say that for the press that they could hold off a little bit. What's a little bit? So they know when they can release it. I, I'll get the date for them. I don't have it in front of me. Oh, the 19th. Oh, no, that's today. Anything else? Okay. All in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign, so moved. And uh, I, I did keep the hotel tax grants on here. There is something, there is a change uh, actually for your review. Uh, there was a revised application that came from the Penn State Extension total project cost for the uh, Penn State Crop Conference is 6250 requesting 5000 There is an unencumbered balance of 10957 If you decide you want to do any of these three, we don't have any news since the last meeting, but there was that that revised application. So there's a balance. We have 10957 10, is in the account. You have three pending requests for $5,000 each. Okay. So, if it's the uh, pleasure of the board, uh, however you want to proceed, if you want to take the lease, we would move on any of them. We happen to consider anything. I think we tabled it last time, hoping to get some more funds in and build it up a little bit before we give it all to the expo. And I say that kindly, but they do get a significant amount from us. So I think we need to make sure we have some build up a little bit. The expo is not one of the applications. They're being held at the expo. Okay. Three of them. Well, you don't have to. They're they're not asking. We have eleven thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. They're not asking for the for the total. Does anybody want to make a motion on any part of these, even if we only do part partial awards? I'm not sure what the benefit of Waiting till there's more money if we have money to well, cover some of these events. Asking for seventeen thousand dollars, and I just think we should hold off until we build up. That's what we decided at the last meeting. Did I miss it? Did I miss that? You're asking for seventeen thousand. There's one that the original amount was seven seven thousand five hundred. Yeah, they, they're aware of the five thousand dollar max at this point, so. We treat them. We're treating them all as five thousand. Since you're, that's the max, though. But we can't yeah, do a yeah. thousand if we. That's yeah. Do whatever you want. So, okay. But nothing today. Um, I'll just table it until next month. Okay. Ready. Um, and then we'll look for anything from the floor. If not, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, we stand adjourned and turn the yeah. Uh, Gavel over to Chairman Ku for the next part of the meeting. Hearing. Here. Call this meeting of the Lebanon County uh, Board of Elections to order. Uh, you want to introduce yourself and your colleague and, and go ahead then. I'm Sean New Asher and Chris Scarborough from the Elections Office. Here to give you a status update of everything going on with the fall election. 
Okay. Yeah, actually, we'll start with the approval of minutes. So. Entertain a motion to approve those minutes as, as attached to your packet. Second. 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 Questions, comments, changes? <laughs> Not all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Let's have it. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Okay, so we'll start uh, with a quick overview of the numbers. Numbers are extremely strong for the county. You'll see the growth in the numbers report we left with you. We're up to uh, creeping up to 94,000 registered voters. It's a high point for us. Um, mail in in the spring, we were at about 8,000, uh, about 8,000. Currently, we're just at about 12,000, which is what we were estimating ending at. So we're a little ahead of where we'll, where we'll end up. We're bringing in about 50 or so new applications a day. And uh, I, I think, Joy, you wanted to bring up, I think this is a really good point about the voter roll maintenance. Yes. Um, as you know, we do eight months of intensive voter roll maintenance. This year we sent out, well, from the last election until today, we sent out over 8,000 letters to do that. From that came 1,800 voters removed. So we, despite us having net growth, significant net growth in registered voters, we still wiped out of creeping up on 2,000 voters from the rolls. Maintenance continues. Yes. May I just ask a The guideline for urging, is it still two uh, national elections? Yes. yes. Since about eight years? Uh, well, it's more like five because you if you skip the one and then you go to the next one, it's oh, more so five. It's not the end of the, okay. Yeah, it's not the end of the cycle. Once you get your flag up, you miss that second one. And during that time, we sent out numerous letters to the voter. So in addition to missing two federal elections, they also have to show absolutely no response to any of the letters. Were any of those letters returned? Those 1,800? Um, over 8,000 we sent out. Uh, returned, yes, we were able to take 1,800 people off the rolls. So so the people that stayed on the books would have returned their letters to us or made some sort of right. confirmation. But the 1,800, all those letters came back or they just didn't respond? You mean it was undeliverable? Yes. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, there were numerous. Uh, I can't give you a number right now, but I'd be happy to give that to you later. I just was curious um, if it was most of them you know, were undeliverable or not. There were probably several hundred that were undeliverable. Okay. Yes. Thank you. The good numbers. That is very strong for us. Uh, and if you consider <clears throat> what we would project, over 88% turnout when you combine mail-in and election day turnout, you can, you can extrapolate the numbers for yourself right there. It's going to be going to be a very busy day. Well, it's going to be a very, very busy few weeks <laughs> and then a very busy final day. That's amazing. Yeah. So it's good. Yeah, it is. It's all it's all good news. And I it, it's worth mentioning, too. This wasn't something I didn't think we'd mention, but it is worth mentioning that uh, we're, we're all caught up the, as fast as things are coming in. We are caught up to that day. So we don't have hundreds sitting in Iraq somewhere. I, I saw that in a, a local news story with another county where they were accused of having hundreds. Well, if you're getting hundreds in every day, it's understandable you might have a few hundred to process still. So it's not a big deal. But we are at the end of every day, we're being caught up. Good so for we're you. Up with the work. Amazing. Yeah. Again. <laughs> good staff. Yeah, we have had some very good hires. One of them sitting next to me. It's been very helpful. Um so. We are projecting that if everything goes well, the, the agenda is slightly, slightly out of order, only because I wanted to mention that if we are able to approve the ballot today, move forward with testing next week, that means that assuming all testing goes well, which I have no reason to believe it wouldn't, uh, we would be able to wrap up the week and be exporting our data file for mail at the end of next week, safely saying that everything would be in the mail for mail and ballots by October 1st, hoping maybe even sooner. So that being said, at that point, it brings us back around to the spring conversation of the drop off point in the parking lot. Uh, if we last week we went out with the shed about a week after 
the ballots when they went out. If that would be the case, can't write down the date. Sorry. If that would be in the case, it would be this time around, October seventh or eighth would be the day that um, that would match the spring schedule. I, I would humbly propose we do just what we did in the spring. It worked extremely well. Republicans and Democrats both accepted it. Uh, it was very well used. We uh, had no problem staffing. In fact, we had people doubling, tripling up, coming back again. And like, I would like to work again today, but we already have somebody on the schedule. <laughs> so it, uh, it, there was some concern a week or two ahead of time, but by the time we launched it, there was no problems whatsoever finding people that wanted to help. Um, but we would need to make a decision now on that because in order to get it on the schedule for when we want to start shipping ballots, we'd have to start planning staffing for that now. So I understand that we have to have another motion for that if we, based on how the motion was phrased in the spring. <clears throat> Uh, I ask that you could have a motion to put that out starting off. Should we first do the ballot? Uh, it's in the terms of today, parliamentary. It does matter to me. No, no. I think okay, we well, I'll make a motion to put the shed out then. And that would be for October 7th. That would put us out on the same schedule as before. Yes. Uh, second the motion. I'm sorry. So I just uh, say questions or yeah, just to observe it. This will be the same with cameras to make sure, and, and it'll be people that are employed or are on, you know, part of yes. this. Yes, trained and employees. So, and uh, we didn't keep a log last time how many people were turned away, but there were people, I can tell you, every day that were turned away who came and tried to handle spouses. Always always a spouse, uh, but we were turned away and they had to come back. The spouse had to so come back. So it's work. going to be as good as it was the last time absolutely no ballot harvesting no ballot harvesting that is the term people like to use so and we've tried to really educate the voters about having a designated agent for the selection yeah surprisingly the voters are accepting the the correction well generally and because we can uh, monitor the mail that's coming back by the barcoding and so on um i, I wanted to just be out a week uh, figuring that the folks that you know couldn't uh, get their ballots in uh, or they weren't showing up and didn't want to take a chance, I was thinking that the shed was a good idea for for those folks to get them in the last part. But I'm going to modify my thinking on that because of the volume. You know, if we're dealing with 88 percent or whatever that number ends up being, I, I want to make sure that we have every ability to get those uh, those mm -hmm. ballots in. So, okay. Just the map questions and observations. So a motion second uh, to begin to place it out there beginning October 7th uh, and through election day. <laughs> through election day. Uh, uh, any additional comments, questions? In favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. And, any opposed? Let's have it and proceed. Uh, we also have been doing school outreach. We have a, a excellent program through Levin and High. Uh, Keith Rowland, our contact there, is an amazing guy and um, very, uh, very type A on top of the ball. I love working with him. So he makes arrangements for our students. He takes them with a van and drives them himself, all the students, to the polling places around the wards. He staffs all the wards in the city. Hope uh, not, it's not a requirement to be bilingual, but he goes out of his way to make sure we have bilingual students in all the city wards. And uh, this is being looked at at the state level as a model program. It's been so successful. Uh, I'm really proud of Keith and the work he does. Uh, he's awesome. So that has been successful. Palmyra is looking to copy that program. And we already have eight students signed up for Palmyra. I'm looking for an update later today. I expect even more than that. Cedarcrest has also asked that they could uh, model the program and have their students out in their local precincts as well. And the New Covenant schools also approached us, actually they approached us rather than us them, and asked that they could participate and we have students signing up through them as well. So we are going to have a huge number to be determined of polling places yet that are going to be staffed by students this time around. I love that the future is secure because they're getting their yeah. feet on the ground out in the field and that just creates enthusiasm and commitment and um, our, our votes are, and elections are going to be good into the future. 
uh, I was at a cross country meet this week and a boy walked up to his grandfather at the cross country meet after the race was over and said, uh, I'm so excited. I just became a poll worker. I'm going to get paid and everything. And his grandfather said, well, it's about time somebody I know I can trust is in those polling places. So I introduced myself and uh, <laughs> and we got along great after that. So <laughs> it's kind of a neat little moment. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on your joint um, video with other election directors as well. Oh, thank you. That was a fun project. Yeah, it's yeah. very well done. Yeah. The, the director that did that is really knows his stuff. <laughs> um, so thank you. I'd like to get that up on our webpage. We'll talk. Um, in addition to school outreach, we are continuing our nurse, nursing home outreach. Uh, there, it's just about every week we're in somewhere, but we are finding we're going back to the same places again and again and again in a good way. We're seeing different areas and different residents in the home. Uh, overwhelmingly positive results with that, and it's usually uh, about forty-five minute or so meeting and uh, we, we just cover the highlights and answer the questions they have. And wow, it's the residents of these nursing homes are so much fun in these meetings. It's uh, I, I didn't realize that when we were taking this on, how much how enjoyable it would be. Uh, we'll, we'll keep that rolling as much as we can with our scheduled time. At this point, we might have to take a break at this stage until after the election. Uh, LNA will be next week. We start Monday morning, first thing. Uh, the court cases that we're holding. Okay, we'll do. Uh, so the logic and accuracy testing of all our equipment will be next week. Uh, we were waiting our court cases before we can move forward with the ballot, which we'll show you here in just a second. Oh, yeah, we did went roll right past that. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so the court cases have been resolved middle of this week, um, and you guys had the ballot less than a day later. The three examples I left for you have the 98th, the 101st, and the 102nd as the only differences on the ballot. I think it looks great. Yep. Make a motion to approve the three submitted uh, sample ballots. Second. Motion second. Any comments, questions? So you want to elaborate a little bit on timing and. Mm -hmm. Now. So now what we'll do is we'll do internal testing today, uh, starting right after this meeting is over. Uh, the crew that we use that we bring in for our logic and accuracy testing will arrive Sunday night. Monday morning will kick off very early. It'll go all day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Often we end up going Friday as well. So while we're doing testing, we're not just testing the ballot. We're testing all the equipment, all the little printers that are in the machines, the battery backups that are in all the machines. Uh, all that stuff, Every, everything that can be tested, the pull pads will be tested as well. So we'll go through all of that next week. And then um, towards the end of the week, we'll know where we stand. I don't really have any concerns this cycle. Everything looks like we're going to be in a very good schedule wise. And so uh, the end of next week, we'll be able to then generate our mailing lists and get them over to the printer following week. October 1st is a good, safe date. Uh, we'll know they're in the mail. And if we are able to jump ahead of that schedule, we'll send you an email and let you know that we're a little ahead of schedule. Also, you're a little behind of where you thought you might be due to some legal Court issues. Cases. So about that, we anticipated the legal cases. We, uh, based on what happened previous election cycles in the presidential, there were always third party legal cases that pushed right up until October. So we didn't even schedule LNA until we haven't had to move anything. Everything is right on schedule with what we were anticipating it to be. Uh, what you've been seeing in the news nationally is a little, we don't understand it. We don't know where the, the, the schedule, the September 16th date came that was nationally reported. My colleagues, none of them understand where it came from. We talked to the Department of State. Uh, they had some back and forth. Well, we think it's based on this and that, but if we, no one seems to know where that September 16th date really came from. Uh, it has never been an official date. So we're, all the counties are all right on schedule. We're doing very well. So, yeah. We're in a good place. The percentage of um, ballots that we'll have on hand per precinct, what percentage are you going with? 100%. 100%. That's our side of the year. Minus, uh, minus the mail in ballots. Yep. So, uh, yeah. but there'll be plenty. But, yep. We won't have to be having a printing issues or anything. 
The only way that they will run out of ballots is they spill a bucket of coffee on the Saturday on election day, and then there's always a backup plan. Any additional questions, comments? I can go through these three ballots as presented. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Let's have it. Approved. So uh, if you have any other questions for me, I'm, I'm ready to field them, but we are trying to change nothing between the primary general, especially this year. So uh, there's not really a whole lot to be concerned about that way, uh, unless you'd say adding more student workers, which I don't think is any concern of ours. Uh, the, uh, we are looking at possibly jumping up the project of uh, combining precincts potentially or altering the precinct lines because next year we'll be voting on uh, new judges of election and inspectors for the precincts. So while the timeline for my office 2026 is much better in light of that 2025 election, it probably would make sense to jump things up if we can. So we'll see. I just want to let you know that we're going to try to put something together post election uh, and move forward with that. Wow, that's great thought. Yeah. Um, you are such a well-oiled machine over there. I'm very proud and confident in the fact that we will have fair and impartial elections. And again, that video goes a long way to say that. But I just hope people appreciate what you do and how fortunate we are to have the team that we have over there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Good blush. <laughs> well, it's true. If, you, if I have a complaint, I, I certainly air that. So when credit is due, it, it deserves to be said, not just thought. I was not printed on our <clears throat> agenda, but we, so we did open the floor for public comment. So I'll do that at this time. Is there any public comment? Or do you want to identify yourself for the record, please? And yes, my name is Duncan McLean from South Lebanon Township. Uh, and I'll just add uh, a kudo to the Office of Elections uh, coming from Representative uh, John Schlegel, uh, which was said at his town hall meeting, I think it was two Thursdays ago. My was it last Thursday. Anyway, it was. Uh, he publicly uh, expressed with great confidence in the, in the Board of Elections and the Office of Elections. Thank you. Anything else for the good of the order? If not, well, I think motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Favor. Adjourn. Thank you. Thank you.